I'm in one of our smaller teaching spaces because we got, we've got students back in the labs, not very many, and they have to observe social distancing rules, wear masks and all those other things to try and keep them safe. But we've got students studying anatomy in the labs, which is, which is kind of nice, kind of scary. Um, okay, so this week I was teaching the uh, intercostal muscles and muscles of respiration and breathing generally. And um, apparently I haven't done this on the models yet. So we're going to look at the intercostal muscles this week and we'll look at the accessory muscles of uh, inspiration and what have you next week. What am I talking about? Well, intercostal literally means between the ribs. So I'm talking about the muscles in between the ribs. We'll talk about the three layers, the directions of the fibers, where they run, the movements of the rib cage and the sternum. And then we'll talk about what the real function of the intercostal muscles is. There are three layers of intercostal muscles in the thoracic wall. And this mimics the three layers of muscles forming the abdominal wall as well. So there's another pattern within us, a pattern within our torso. The three layers of intercostal muscles are the external intercostal muscles, the internal intercostal muscles, sensible so far, and the innermost intercostal muscles. And what we can see here on, on Weeman, on this model, is that if you take away pectoralis major, you see pectoralis minor here. So take away the big muscle, and then we can see some of these muscle layers between the ribs. And they are between the ribs. They're not running over the ribs, either superficially or deep. They're running from rib to rib. They're literally intercostal muscles, as I said before. And we can see an intercostal muscle here. Oh, but we can see, we can see a boundary here. We can see a different intercostal muscle there. So we have to be a little bit careful and a little bit thoughtful. And as we spin around here, we can see some other muscles covering over the ribs. But here are some intercostal muscles here. Now, the external intercostal muscle layer is this layer here, not this layer. Uh, and it is also this layer here. So the external intercostal muscle layer is running between the ribs from where the rib leads the leaves the vertebra and it runs all the way around in between the ribs, all the way around laterally and anteriorly to about this point here. Can you see? Bum, 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 bum. To about where the bone of the rib meets the cartilage. That's as far as the external intermuscle runs. And the external intercostal muscle fibers kind of run in, run in this direction. If it's kind of like a hands in pockets direction is how it gets described. The fibers are running anteriorly and inferiorly, or you might actually describe that in the opposite direction, which would be postero superiorly. Both of those terms mean the same thing, if that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing. But we tend to say the external intercostal muscle layer, their fibers run antero inferiorly, like this. Now the deeper layer, the inter internal intercostal muscle layer, we can see that those here, they're actually running from the sternum around posteriorly. And then we can't see it because it's deep to the external intercostal muscle layer. And the direction of these fibers is, is opposite. So we can see that these fibers are kind of running not like that, sorry, not like that, but like that, if that makes sense. So they would be running postero inferiorly. So that's the internal intercostal muscle layer here. Now we can't see them, as I said, they run deep to the external intercostal muscle layer, but the internal intercostal muscle starts from the sternum between the ribs and runs all the way around between the ribs to about this point here, to the angle of the rib. What do I mean by that? Well, the shape of the rib is not a simple hemispherical curve. It's not, it's not just a curve. Look, see, this is where the rib meets the vertebra. We've talked about the ribs before in detail and the joints here, but there's essentially a straight part. It's angled a little bit inferiorly here. There's a straight part. And then look here at this point, the direction that the rib takes and the shape of the rib changes fairly abruptly. This gets called the angle of the rib. So the internal intercostal muscle layer 
runs from the sternum between the ribs around to around the angle of the rib here. That's the internal intercostal muscle there. And the innermost intercostal muscles are deep to the internal intercostal muscles and essentially run with them. So they run again from the sternum around as far as the angle of the rib here. Um, the fibre direction is the same as the internal intercostal muscle fibres and they're often considered um, deep parts of the internal intercostal muscles, but they're not. They're, they're separate muscles. They're, the way they're arranged by connective tissue shows that we have separate layers of external, internal and innermost intercostal muscles. Uh, what do they do then? Well, we need to consider the movements of the thorax then, don't we? So. If you put one hand on your sternum and one hand on your back and breathe out and then breathe in, your hands get pushed apart, don't they? The sternum is getting elevated, it's getting lifted superiorly and anteriorly. And by doing so, we increase, the we increase that dimension of the thorax, the antero-posterior dimension of the thorax. We increase the volume, decreasing the pressure inside and drawing air in. Now, the other thing that happens is now, if you put your hands on your sides, breathe out and then breathe in, your hands get pushed apart again laterally, don't they? So the ribs are also lift, being lifted. The ribs are being elevated laterally. Um, and these movements are in addition to the diaphragm. You, you guys are probably sat at home, you're nice and relaxed. You're not burning a lot of energy. So your diaphragm is pulling down and increasing the volume inside the thorax and pulling air in. Um, whereas for me, because I'm standing up and moving around and projecting my voice, I'm using my intercostal muscles to move the ribs. Okay, so we talk about the bucket handle movement. So with the sternum here, that movement, sorry, that movement was a pump handle, not a bucket handle. So when we, the sternum gets elevated like a pump handle, if you think of those pump handles of old that you move them and they pump water out of the ground. And then this movement, the lateral movement, this is the bucket handle movement, whereas the ribs are considered like the handle of a bucket. And as you lift the handle of a bucket, it also gets pulled laterally, it also gets wider, right? Pump handle and bucket handle movements of the thoracic cage. And what's moving there are the ribs. And in fact, the rib is just moving a little bit at its joints with the vertebrae down here. A little bit of rotation of the rib, a little bit of movement of the rib can cause larger movements laterally and anteriorly to the thoracic cage as a whole. So, is that the role of the intercostal muscles? Well, partly yes. If we look at the electrical activity of the external intercostal muscles, they are most active on inspiration in that they are said to be lifting the ribs upwards and outwards, which is accounted for by the direction of the muscle fibers and the shape of the rib and where we find that intercostal muscle layer running. The internal intercostal muscles then are said to do the opposite because of their fiber direction, because of where they run between the ribs and the shapes of the ribs, the internal intercostal muscles pull the ribs down, make the thoracic cage volume smaller, push air out and the innermost intercostal muscle layer then does the same job because those fibers are in the same place in the same positions relative to the ribs and the fibers are running in the same direction but is that their most important function no not really you are breathing in and out all day long whether you're using your diaphragm intercostal muscles or other muscles to help move the ribs and what you're doing is you're as i said changing the pressure inside the thorax and we have a thoracic cage we have a cage made of ribs but if we just had a cage made of ribs with skin over the top every time you change the pressure inside the thorax surely the skin would get pulled in or pushed outwards like a balloon because skin is quite stretchy so the intercostal muscles then are forming a muscular wall they're forming a pressure barrel they're really forming the wall of the thorax with the ribs that resists those pressure changes that you create inside your thorax so that you can change the volume inside the thorax and change the pressure efficiently and effectively now the intercostal nerves innervate the intercostal muscles so the intercostal 
nerves come from the spinal cord essentially and run around in between the ribs and the intercostal nerves innervate the intercostal muscles. How might you damage those nerves? How might, what might the effects be? Well, it, a, uh, a cervical spinal cord injury would cause paralysis of the muscles innervated by the intercostal nerves because damage here means that those motor nerves distal to that point are going to be affected, right? So if somebody has a neck spinal nerve injury, then that's what we see is we see paralysis, a loss of tone of the intercostal muscles. As they breathe in, some of that, some of that pressure change is lost to pulling in the muscle in the skin instead of pulling air in. Um, some, I think some months after the injury, uh, usually some tone starts to um, return for various neurological reasons. Um, but that's, that's what the intercostal muscles are, that's their most important job, is forming a pressure barrel for that mechanism of breathing. They might, you might also say they're involved in protection of the contents of the thoracic cage and the parietal pleura is stuck up against the innermost intercostal muscles and all, all sorts of things like that. But I just want you to think about it and bear that in mind. So that's it, those are the intercostal muscles. There are three layers, they run between the ribs. They are involved in pulling the ribs down or pulling the ribs up, contributing to the pump handle and the bucket handle movements, which cause changes in the volume inside the thorax, causing you to draw air in or push air out. They're innervated by the intercostal nerves and um, they help form the pressure barrel wall of the thorax so that this all works. All right, next week I think what we'll talk about is we'll talk about the accessory muscles of inspiration, the other muscles that attach to the ribs but maybe don't normally move the ribs and how we can make them move the ribs. All right, um, so if you want to know more, I'll see you for that one.